In this video, you will learn to control a motor using your Arduino and a special circuit part called a transistor. You can see here I have a circuit built with a potentiometer connected to one of the Arduino's analog inputs, and when I turn the potentiometer knob, it controls the motor's speed. Before we get started building the circuit, let's talk a little bit about what a transistor is and why we need one. If you have built Arduino projects before, you have probably used LEDs and connected them directly to the Arduino's digital pins. That works fine because LEDs do not require very much electrical current. They only need about 20 milliamps to light up, and that is about how much the Arduino's digital pins can provide. However, even very small motors can require dozens or even hundreds of milliamps, and drones usually have multiple motors so you cannot power a motor directly from one of the Arduino's pins. To do that, you need an external battery pack which can provide more current. The transistor acts sort of like an electronic control valve that lets you use the Arduino to control the current flowing from the battery pack through the motor. You'll notice that the transistor actually has three pins. One of them accepts the control signal from the Arduino, but it doesn't really draw a lot of power from the Arduino. It uses the other two pins to complete a circuit from the motor to the battery pack to let the current from the battery pack flow through the motor. Let's switch over to Tinkercad and take a look at how to do this. We are actually going to start out with a simple circuit that you have probably seen before if you have worked with Arduino using a potentiometer to control the brightness of an LED. Once we understand how this circuit and code works, then we will swap in the transistor. So again, you should have seen this before. We have a breadboard connected to the Arduino's five volts and ground with the power buses. We have an LED with a 220 ohm current limiting resistor connected to one of the Arduino's pins. Note that we are using a pulse width modulation pin, which has the little squiggly symbol or tilde next to it because we will need that later. And finally, we have a potentiometer, which has three pins. We have the outer two pins connected to five volts and ground. And then we have the middle pin, which will have an analog or adjustable voltage connected to one of the Arduino's analog input pins. So go ahead, pause the video here, and connect these components to your circuit. Once you've built the circuit, let's take a look at the code that we will use to control the brightness of the LED with the potentiometer. First, we declare two constant variables for the LED and potentiometer pins. Then we declare two additional variables for the potentiometer reading and the pulse width modulation or PWM value that will control the LED brightness. Then in the setup function, we actually don't need to do anything because we don't need to use the pin mode command with the analog read and analog write functions. And then finally, in our loop function, we have three lines of code. First, we use analog read to read the value from the potentiometer this is going to read a value between 0 and 1023. The analog write function that we will use to control the brightness of the LED, however, only accepts a value between 0 and 255. So in between those two lines of code, we use the Arduino map function to convert that potentiometer reading value from the 0 to 1023 range down to the 0 to 255 range. We assign that to a new variable, and then we use that in the analog write function. When we run the simulation, or if you run this code on a physical Arduino, you will see that turning the potentiometer knob controls the brightness of the LED, kind of like a dimmer switch. Note that PWM, or pulse width modulation, is not actually changing the voltage to the LED, it is flicking the LED on and off very, very fast, much faster than the human eye can see, which gives it an effective average voltage. So for example, if I have the knob of the potentiometer right here in the middle, then the LED would be receiving about two and a half volts on average as the voltage toggles between zero and five. If I turn the potentiometer down, so the LED brightness is much lower, then that average voltage is closer to zero. If I turn it up, then that average voltage gets closer to five. Now that we understand how that works, let's take a look at changing this circuit to use a transistor to control a motor. We actually aren't going to need to change the code at all, so we will close that for now. I'm going to delete the LED and the resistor from the circuit, and I have three new parts out here that we're going to need to connect. 
I have my external battery pack. Remember the motor requires too much current to be driven directly by one of the Arduino pins, which is why we need the transistor to help control the power coming from the battery pack. I have my DC motor, which has two wires, and I have a transistor here. Now there are many different types of transistors. We are only going to cover one type in this video called an N-channel MOSFET. MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. We are not going to worry at all about what that means. You just need to know that the N-channel MOSFET has three pins, as you can see here in Tinkercad labeled G, D, and S. That stands for Gate, Drain, and Source. So get these three parts out in your Tinkercad model and I will show you how to connect them. The first thing I'm going to do is put my MOSFET in the breadboard. Make sure the three pins go in three different rows of the breadboard. You should remember how a breadboard works at this point, but if they are all in the same row like this, then those pins are being short circuited together. So make sure your pins go in three different rows. Next, I'm going to connect the gate pin. That is the control pin that's going to accept the signal from the Arduino. So I'm going to route my jumper wire that I had previously been used previously used to control the LED over to my gate pin. Next, I'm going to connect the source pin to my ground bus. So I'm just going to run a jumper wire over here from the source pin to ground and make sure if you're using ground buses on opposite sides of the breadboard that you connect them with a jumper wire because they are not connected internally. Next up, I'm going to connect my motor. I'm going to connect the motor's positive wire to the power bus over here, which will you, you will notice is not connected to anything yet. I'm saving that for last with connecting the battery pack. And I'm going to connect the motor's negative wire to the drain pin of the MOSFET. So nothing is going to happen yet because I haven't connected my external battery. But in general, when working with an external battery pack, you want to save that for last, double check all of your wiring, and make sure you don't have any short circuits before you connect it. So I'm going to connect the negative wire of my battery to the ground bus. It is important for your entire circuit to have a common ground, meaning the negative wire from the battery is connected through the buses to the Arduino's ground pin. But you need to remember not to short circuit the positive voltage from the battery to five volts from the Arduino. So finally, I am going to connect the positive wire from my battery to the power bus on this side, but remember I have isolated the two power buses. They are not connected by a jumper wire, unlike the ground buses which are connected by a jumper wire. So the way current is going to flow in this circuit, when the MOSFET switches on, think of it like an electronically controlled switch, current will flow out the positive wire of the battery pack, through the bus, through the motor, down to the MOSFET, into the drain pin, then out the source pin, and to the ground bus. So the MOSFET acts like an electronically controlled switch that can control the motor, which is drawing its current from the battery pack and not directly from the Arduino. So what I should be able to do now is run the exact same code that I had before. I'm not going to have to change anything because this code is just going to change the PWM value on this pin, which is going to the gate of the MOSFET. So it's going to very rapidly switch the MOSFET on and off and that is going to very, very rapidly switch the motor on and off, but so fast that it will spin at a constant speed. So if I go ahead and hit start simulation, we see Tinkercad gives us the RPM or rotations per minute value on the motor. I'm actually gonna rotate that so that text is up right there. It's a little easier to see. So right now I'm at about 6,000 RPM with the potentiometer right in the middle. If I turn the potentiometer up, the motor speed increases to about 11,000 RPM. And as I gradually turn it down, the motor speed will eventually decrease to zero. So I am now, just like I was using the potentiometer to control the brightness of the LED, I haven't changed my code at all. I've just changed my circuit to use the transistor to control the current flowing through the battery. And I can now use the potentiometer to control the speed of the motor. So if you haven't already, pause the video here, add the external battery pack, the motor, and the transistor to your circuit, and then run the same code and make sure you can use the potentiometer to change the motor's speed. Now, this shows you how to connect a single motor with a single transistor. You can control multiple motors, and how you do that depends on whether you always want your motors to spin at the same speed or if you want independent control of them. 
If you only ever need them to spin at the same speed, you can connect them all to the same transistor as long as you don't exceed the current rating of the transistor, which you would need to look up in its datasheet. So, pause the video here and see if you can figure this one out on your own. Try connecting a second motor to this transistor. In case you couldn't figure it out, I will show you how to do that. First, I'm going to clean up my wiring a bit for this first motor. Then I'm going to add a second motor to my circuit, rotate it so it fits next to the first one, and then I'm going to connect it in parallel. So you don't want to put the motors in series or connect them end to end. You're going to connect them in parallel, meaning I am also going to connect this motor's positive wire to the power bus. And then I am going to connect the negative wire to the same breadboard row as the drain and the other motor negative wire. So now these two motors are connected to the same drain pin of the MOSFET. They're both controlled by a single signal from the Arduino. So when I run this simulation, I should see them both spinning at the same speed and their speeds change at the same time when I use this potentiometer. If I wanted to control them separately, I would need to add a second MOSFET and a second potentiometer and then edit my code to use multiple Arduino pins, one input and one output for each motor. 